Now, and our third and final talk in part two in this kind of curriculum thread um, is from Rob Power, who's going to be talking about moving from local to global and thinking about how we create global curriculums that are totally inclusive. Good morning, Rob. It's lovely to meet you. Good morning. Likewise. Likewise. Over to, over to you. Right today and um i think for me um it's it's so so important that we begin to uh promote uh sort of student activism and and, and kind of student engagement in these uh debates and these discussions and i hope you can see these slides that are that are coming up at the moment but Something that I found in surveying over 500 teachers over the course of my work um, with Powerful Histories is that there's a real kind of disconnect between, in many schools, what, what as educators we think we know best and at the same time uh, what, what kind of young people uh, would like and would like to see. I've got a couple of quotes here from uh, quite dispiriting quotes, you know, from my perspective uh, that, that I had when I first started out on this journey. And yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of talk through, you know, when, when we think about who should lead change and where change should come from, often we look to ourselves. And the project that I've been launching in a number of schools really focuses on how we can shift this this uh, th th this activism really from from ourselves and and uh, shift it to to young people. Um, now there are three things or three component parts to this local local to global uh, teaching project. Invariably, when we uh, embrace debates and discussions around uh, diversity within schools, it's it's about what we teach. And the first thing I observed from many staff was 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 that school leaders tended to to go to uh, humanities or arts departments and say, "What can you do to integrate uh, non-white, non-Western modules into what you teach?" And I couldn't help but feel that this is an unhelpful, um, uh, and to be frank, a, a, a a reaction to uh, to many of these really really important debates and discussions that wasn't leading to lasting and meaningful change. So what we thought about doing in in a number of schools is creating personalised engagement pathways for students, so that we could inspire them to become activists and allies and appreciate that the communities in which they lived and work were products of much broader global transactions. And part of that is not just exploring what we teach, but how we teach it. And I'm always minded to think of Audre Lorde's quote, um, the master's tools and the master's house. If we are still delivering non Western modules, for instance, but still using ostensibly Western pedagogies, then to what extent are we really beginning to meaningfully um, decolonize our, our learning spaces? So let me just share a little bit more about the three kind of components to the, the local to global project and the, the, the global kind of teaching, uh, uh, teaching project. Now the local to global project is this much bigger cog in the wheel which we we want everything that we do moving forward to be led by young people to be led by students and then in uh, component parts for teachers to be able to support and facilitate that as and when we're able to do so we want to create curriculums which are responsive and reflect the lived realities and lived experiences of the worlds that young people live in. And ultimately that is about celebrating uh, uh, stories that haven't perhaps featured in, uh, in the curriculums of, of, of young people today. Now the Local to Global project comprises three main parts. And we encourage students in the initial instance to look at their own class and their own community and you see here from from my first sort of uh, much smaller orange circle that, that you have a the students will will talk about they'll, they'll write five facts about themselves and then they'll go and put those five facts which might perhaps talk about where they were born uh where they where they spent most of their 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 uh, 
younger younger years uh, uh, and perhaps where they're living now and they'll go and stick those on a on a map and invariably whether I'm in London or in Manchester or or in Norfolk the the, the, the those uh, student experiences will not particularly be uh, very diverse they they will you know pretty much uh, uh, be uh, relational to the to the areas in which the school is based. However, when we encourage young people to think about the broader stories and experiences from their own family, look at the global pattern that then begins to emerge, which isn't seen in that first kind of exercise. Now, I think this is interesting in itself to explore, and this is an example from a school in, in uh, London. We want to promote critical interrogation of, of these global experiences. And I've highlighted here, for instance, that most of the, the students came from, uh, or, or families and family stories and experiences, came from uh, former British Empire uh, uh, colonies. Now, to encourage students um, to think critically about that and about what that perhaps might tell them about uh, th their own uh, unconscious biases is actually a really good starting point for further debate and discussion. From this point, we begin to think about the history of the school, history as, as how diverse perhaps that, that school history might be, and then expanding it out and looking at local communities. Now, again, here is an example from a school in, in uh, London. And one of the things that we were able to identify from this, this journey, which started out at the local, i.e. the personal experiences of the student, and then began to expand to incorporate local communities, is that many of those students, despite living in uh, an, an area of London which comprised a, a diversity of communities, many of those students were completely unaware that they lived in a, a, a community with uh, one of the largest concentrations of Somali communities in, in the UK. From this point, what we were able to do is think about ways in which we might find I always uh, go back to that that uh, idea of listening to to the silence or embracing the silence in order to um, uh, consider the ways in which we can represent hidden stories and hidden experiences. After encouraging students to do so, something we did was to reflect and invite uh, members of the Somali community into the school. And we interviewed, this, this, is, this is young people interviewing members of the Somali community. We interrogated a, a, a data that has been released on, on, on uh, that particular community and identified the challenges that the Somali community um, was facing. And what we were able to do is determine that um, the stories of the Somali community in the UK had been completely unrepresented. In order to make an impact, to personalise learning, to promote uh, uh, change in that regard, we asked students to become activists themselves. And something, images that we see here is when we gave students the opportunity to launch a social action campaign with an entire year nine group, um, that year nine group were then able to receive funding for uh, uh, a, a charity idea which uh, uh, could feed into the work of the Somali organisations that we invited in. So this is truly a local to global uh, project, but it's also complemented by two other things. The first thing that, that we are encouraging staff to embrace some of the uh, amazing and, and rich literature uh, uh, around uh, pedagogy and, and writing and to, to feed into uh, this, this really exciting project. But we're also encouraging staff to think about global knowledge pathways. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, there is simply no point in, in the inclusion of, of non-Western modules in curriculums unless we're going to consider, as Bell Hooks argues, non-Western knowledge acquisition. 
So the local to global project and the, the, in, in, the ways in which we can uh, uh, globalize our curriculums can perhaps be rooted very much in the local. We always encourage students that this is an opportunity to embrace uh, conversation. This is their community, their future, and we want to make sure that their voice is heard. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. It was really interesting listening to you. And I, I, my brain is just going in all of this. And I'm coming at this from a very practical point of view. So forgive me if this sounds reductive. Um, so with this, with the local to global, is this part of your PSHE curriculum? Or is it part of a wider curriculum that you offer for your students? Right. So as a as a kind of freelance, I work with a lot of different schools and it, it kind of takes two forms um, and, and invariably it depends on the agenda of the school. And of course, we are change makers. So we want to try, if we can, to change schools agendas with regards to this. So for many of the independent schools that I work with, for instance, space is found within the curriculum to run this project as an entire as an entire academic year project. For other schools, what we tend to do is run the project as kind of uh, half day or day events. Mm -hmm. But the aim is that whatever is the outcome, there is a legacy left after that. Mm -hmm. And the legacy isn't just within the school community, it's in the wider community too. So we now have, for instance, as a result of the, the Local to Global project last year in West London, we have peer mentorship groups that are set up between a local mm -hmm. A primary school that has a Somali uh, Somali mm -hmm. children in and year 10 students mm -hmm. so the legacy is, is kind of perpetuating but I wanted to make it flexible as a, as a right. teacher myself one of the biggest challenges we face is time yeah. so this project is is intended to be flexible and, and I am kind of going to hear that you know there is space in some schools to do this and I just wonder whether there is an imperative to almost shift our understanding of PSHE you know we talk about personal social um, mental emotional um, and so health and emotional and actually the, the G part of that the global education often gets put to one side because I don't even think citizenship necessarily covers the global aspect of it is that your experience of what you see in schools a absolutely and you know the thing I, I was um, co-authoring a book with um, a guy called Dr Stephen Whitehead and we we both agree this is a safeguarding issue as much mm. as anything else to 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 encourage um young people to embrace totally inclusive uh, total inclusivity in what they're doing in their curriculum is, is as much a safeguarding issue mm. as some of the existing PSHE curriculums but as we know of course this is also potentially a, a, a destabilizing mm. certainly for the people you know within within particular departments uh you know in in school governance this is potentially destabilizing mm. because it does involve a degree of um changing changing how we how we we uh, professionally develop how mm. teachers performance performances are being judged this is really significant um yeah. but i think the imperative is such that you, you we're getting to a point that certainly in, in my world you can't have one without the other yeah. it has to be a whole scale uh, approach really. yeah and and while you were talking it occurred to me that there might be some conflict between the goals of your project in in highlighting and showcasing non-western pedagogies with the educational trends that are very much part of UK culture um how do we go about navigating that we've got about a, a minute and a half left I know it's a big okay. question yeah. uh I think what what, what would be great is to run that say the global teaching pilot we're running in a number of schools this year mm. um, and teachers are just running it in one particular module one mm. particular delivery we aren't creating knowledge mm. there is no point at which we can say right let's get this and we're, let's you know let's do this next year we're creating knowledge and I, th I think the more teachers get involved in applying uh sort of global pedagogies and teaching mm. methodologies across the subject range mm. um, the more we can begin to create that knowledge that can be useful for teachers in future and enhance the experiences of our students absolutely um, and as with anything it's about balance isn't it and making sure absolutely. that we are 
we are not just um you know in one tra- on a one track um goal we do have to pause there rob um i will be following your progress and uh, certainly seeking you out for advice on on this so thank you so much for sharing with thank us you so today much.